This morning I'm cycling out to two thankful villages that's the villages where every person who went off to serve in the First World War returned home safely alive and I'm going to be leaving my woolen poppies at each. I was supposed to be riding an old axe today I've let the organiser know I'm not starting I'll explain all that later also recently I purchased some new kit electronic stuff mostly some of it planned some of it unplanned so I'll tell you about that during this video anyway that's what's coming up Look at this for paradise. One of my favourite places here for watching dragonflies. Quite often on a summer's day you'll just see the blue and the green just dashing around all over there. Before we climb out this valley and head up onto the Mendips, I'll tell you a little bit about what I was referring to at the introduction. On the Thankful Villages trip, I found out very early on that my old power pack was just kaput basically. It wasn't holding its charge. And even after that, I started using it as a junction box so I could at least charge several devices through the plug. And even that stopped working after a while. And so I disposed of it on that trip. I actually did dispose of it properly. I found a proper recyclable place for batteries because there's some pretty nasty stuff in those devices. Anyway, on my return home, I bought a 20,000 milliamp hour Belkin fast charge power pack and it claims to fully charge in about four hours. And I've tried it, it does, as long as you use a fast charge plug and fast charge cables. I did see a YouTube video where someone ran an experiment with standard plugs, standard cables, and I think it's something like about 15 hours, so you can see quite a difference. So I'm hopefully that's sorted the problem, so that was the emergency purchase. In May, I bought myself this action camera, chest mounted action camera, and I noticed the stabilisation in that was just fantastic and the picture quality and it made me realise how bad my mobile phone had become. So I bought myself a new vlogging camera, that's what I'm recording this on now. It's a Sony ZV-1F vlogging camera and it's so much better, it, it's got stabilisation in it and the quality of the footage is so much better so hopefully you'll notice a difference on that. I didn't want to go on holiday with two brand new cameras. I'm still trying to get my head around all the functions on that one. And it's just as well actually with those power issues as well. After coming home from the Thankful Villages tour, I needed to do a lot of editing to get those films out. And also did a bit of research on the power pack and the camera, etc. And then sadly we had a bereavement in the family. I won't go into details, but some of my family came over and they stayed with us. And it just wasn't appropriate for me to go out. And then last week it was Linda's birthday and we went on holiday and I just had a bit of a boozy holiday to be honest. Um, not excessively but I just really relaxed. It was just so nice spending the evening in the pub just chatting and people watching. And anyway I was down to ride the sword axe today and I went out on Wednesday or Thursday I think just a bit of business and I just realised how unfit I was actually. And so I just emailed the organiser to sort of say apologies. I'm just not up to the 150 miles because that's what it would be with the Audax and they'd get to the start and back from the finish. So hence today, it's going to be about 30, 35 miles of just relaxed cycling hopefully. So a nice place to do a little update actually, just such a beautiful spot this on my way out. Going to be heading out there, get to a T-junction, turn right and the Collier's Way would head into Radstock but we're turning left over the Mendips towards our first thankful village, Chantry. I've just arrived high up on East Mendip at the first of today's thankful villages, Chantry. Quick refresh before I go into the village and find the slate plaque at the church. This is the first thankful village I ever visited last year. A YouTube subscriber, James, thank you once again, James, told me about Thankful Villages, said he thought I might be interested in them. I'd never heard of them, so I went home, researched them, thought, oh, that's worth a bit of a trip. So quick basics. They're villages where every person who went off to serve in the First World War returned safely home. According to my source, there's 54 in England and Wales. Sadly, Scotland and Ireland doesn't have any. 
but depending on what source you use the, the, the numbers are different but I go by this map and this list on the screen now 54 when I started reading up about them it said that Somerset has nine in total nine of that 54 more than any other county so that's on my doorstep this is the first one I ever came to and I found the slate plaque by chance I didn't even know they existed and then I started realising those slate plaques at most of the thankful villages I started visiting and it became a little bit of a mission to go visit them all last year I visited a lot of the Somerset ones and one in Dorset but I didn't leave poppies at them until this year I decided I wanted to make that the theme of my summer trip so you may get the gist of this what I'm doing today I want to revisit all the ones I previously visited and didn't leave a poppy to leave a poppy okay I'm right outside Holy Trinity Church this is the road entrance but it looks like there was a much earlier entrance at the other side which I think used to be the main one let me show you this is a lovely church and you'll see what I mean in just a second it sort of seems it's sat on a ledge overlooking the hillside and there's the gate right in front of it right there and yeah sure that's a very small gate which looks like it's just going down in some fields but it leads right up to the porch which suggests to me south facing as well this used to be the main entrance to the church through there possibly from an estate now of course it's from the main road this is the porch and the slate plaque is there it's the first one I ever came across and that's where I'm going to leave my poppy here's one of my poppies and as usual I'm just going to wrap the stem around the corner of the plaque that's my way of paying respect and anyway let's have a look inside Holy Trinity Church Chantry oh very musty smell not the plug sockets when I don't need them, see if they can get any light on. As usual, look at the roof. Nice little sort of social coffee morning area at the back. Font. Piped organ. Wow. Lovely ornamental pews. Yes, I've taken my hat off. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> well, there's no raised pulpit, but what a place to read the sermon from. Look at that. Oh, this is really nice. As I said, the first and only time I've ever been here before, actually, this church was locked. I'm just going to say, I wonder if that's the original door. Makes me think of that lady who showed me those brasses underneath the rug. Sort of said to me, there's the original door, they've sealed it up. And you could see the corresponding door on the outside. Which I'm wondering if this church was built in separate parts at different times. The more I look around churches, the more fascinated by them actually. I did take my hat off in the church, but I tried filming myself and I realised my recent haircut's a bit brutal. So I've come back outside and put that on. I mentioned that me and Linda went away for a few days. So it's her birthday and we went away to Minehead. We stayed in Weatherspoons in Minehead for four nights. So we were there for five days. Fantastic, which is why we were down in the bar quite a bit actually. Meals and beer and etc. And the first day we were on the seafront and we were just along by Butlins taking some photographs of the sea going on the beach and what you do at seaside. And we saw this double decker bus, open top bus that goes along the coast. It's a rover, you can hop on and hop off wherever you want. It goes down from Watch It all the way down to Ilfracombe, I think. So we thought, oh, hey, great, we'll do that. So we got on it the next day, really nice sunny day. And I couldn't believe it, a double decker bus goes up Porlock Hill. Now I've motorcycled up Porlock Hill and scared the living daylights out of myself. I couldn't believe a double decker bus was going to go up there. And you know, anybody who's driven up it will know, you, you're approaching it, it doesn't look too bad until you get around this hairpin. It's just like a wall of tarmac. And we went up there and you know, we only just missed a coach on the way down. I don't mean collision coach, I mean 
passing and coaching this very narrow spot, which one of us would have had to reverse. And just a double-decker bus getting up Porlock Hill, believe me, if you haven't done it, I would st strongly recommend that trip. Anyway, on the way back, guess what happened? We were halfway down and we came across a coach coming up and you know, the etiquette of the road is the person coming up has right away, don't they? So this bus driver, she actually pulled right in front of the double-decker bus, let all the traffic go by, and then she reversed back up to the boundary side where there was a lay-by. And there were verges either side, so you can imagine if a double-decker bus had gone in that, it would just have gone over the cliff. And I was just gobsmacked. And I say she, it was a lady driver, but I guess they all have those sort of skills to drive the bus up or up hill. And I thought, I'm going to say something on the, on the way down, just compliment just such amazing driving skills. And I thought, no, don't, because you're just going to sound patronising. I was trying to work out what to say, and I couldn't think of what to say, which wouldn't sound patronising. I thought afterwards what I should have ju just done was doffed my cap, but of course I didn't think of it at the time. Amazing experience, the driving skills, just so, so impressive. When I say going down and we drove right up to the double-decker bus, I meant we drove right up to the coach, so they were nose nose. We thought, what's she doing? And, you know, they must be well drilled in that. They just allowed the cars to go by and then she did this amazing reversing. You know, all I can say is I doff my cap to all those drivers, that one driver in particular, because I saw the amazing skills. Can you hear the wind in the trees? I'm so glad I'm not riding that all day today. The, fr the organiser was a friend of mine, so I felt a bit bad about not turning up, but I hope he sort of understood, really. Gorgeous place, you just hear the wind blowing the leaves, you see the trees swaying a little bit. Just before I leave this thankful village and head to the second one today, I wanted to share this website with you. I was going to do this on the cycling holiday, but it would have just made the videos too long. So it's a website about the thankful villages, but you can embed all their locations into your Google Maps. It's easy to put on and it's easy to remove. Let me show you. If I go to Google Maps there, oh, that's where I am at the moment. It's good, it's a frame. Let me show you what I mean. Can you see all the red dots around the country? I'm not quite sure why some are red and some are orange. Um, I thought at first it might be the difference between thankful villages and doubly thankful villages. But it's not. Doubly thankful villages where everybody went off to serve in the First and the Second World War returned home safely. I think there's 16 of those, but as I said, that's not what these are. So let me give you an example. This is where I am. Look. Look what happens if I touch it. It'll tell you Chantry. And then... I can go to more information. Fantastic website. I'll put a link in the description below. And you can imagine how helpful that was on my holiday. Not just for the holiday itself, but in the planning leading up to it. So here we are. It's the second one we're going to go to today. Let's see what it's called. Telesford. I kind of knew that because I've been there before. That was the second one I went to. There you go, look. It'll tell me what a great resource. I wouldn't have the skills to do that. So, huge gratitude to the guy who did. Again, I'll put all the details below. Right, let's head towards Telesford. It's now about 1pm. And we're at our second thankful village today, Tellisford. So I've just come that way from Chantry, crossed over the A36, Bath to Southampton Road. You can see in the far distance there, Salisbury Plain, start of it, the big escarpment. If I can zoom in on the digital zoom. You can just hear the roar of traffic in the background. We're only about half a mile from that main road. Going along here, 
towards Farley Hungerford, Bradford on Avon, and down to there, no through road, that is Telesford. I expect a lot of people from around here probably don't even know where it is, never been down there. Nor had I till I was a postman to be honest. And I've been loving coming here ever since. I've just spotted Westbury White Horse from here, built with that chalk escarpment. See if I can zoom in on that. I'm on the new camera, the Sony ZV1F, I think it's called. It's a fixed lens, it's got a digital zoom up to four times. So I'm interested to see how that comes out. Anyway, I'm getting peckish, I'm going to go down there. Church is on the left hand side, and that's where the slate plaque is. Again, I've been here before, but I'm coming back today. Well, firstly, I want to leave a poppy on that slate plaque, but secondly, I want to have lunch in the church show. It's lovely. Literally, just down from that junction is the church. It'd be very easy to miss this little alleyway. But look, there's the plaque. I'm just going to get my poppy out and leave it on that corner there. There we are. I've actually looped it around the top left hand corner actually to avoid obscuring the Telesford. Telesford 1914 to 2014 Thankful Village. These lovely slate centenary plaques. If you haven't seen previous videos about the Thankful Villages I've decided to start leaving knitted poppies at each of them. My wife's knitted me these lovely poppies. I hope people don't consider it to be littering. I never tie them on anywhere with, where they couldn't be removed easily. So if people are upset that I put them there, it's just easy to remove them. Or if they blow away, I don't really care. What I want to do is just leave them there as a mark of respect. And now what I want to do is walk along there and have my lunch in this lovely churchyard. I'm just walking up that alleyway from the village road up to the church. It's got quite bright now. On the front of my new camera, this is the Sony ZV1F, I think it is. To protect the lens really, more than anything, because it's a fixed lens, you scratch the lens and you pretty much rip the camera off. I've put a filter on the front, a screw-on filter. It's an ND filter, neutral density, so it's a bit like a pair of sunglasses and it's adjustable, so this might be a good idea to show you. You see what I mean? If it is really bright, I can compensate. First time out really vlogging with this camera, so clearly I'm getting used to it. Right, let's try that. This is shady in places and very bright in other places, so I'd be interested to see. I'm just about to walk in some bright sunlight now, what happens? That's not too bad, is it? Anyway, enough about the camera. The purpose of this trip is the two thankful villages. And here's the church at the second village. How's this for a remote isolated one? That's this little narrow alleyway in between two people's properties by the look of it. I suppose about, what, 25 yards? Then you've got the second wooden gate. Look at these lovely hasps and these pins. And I think the gate comes towards me, yep. I'm really peckish, it's lunchtime, so I'm going to have my lunch first of all on that seat there. Bought sandwiches with me and a drink. Then I'll give you a tour around the churchyard and then we'll go inside. <laughs> Just finished my lunch on that lovely spot there. Leave my bike in the churchyard. Now go inside. You may see the wind's really picking up actually in the trees. I'm actually filming at the moment on the new Sony ZV1F camera and I'm using the built in microphone, which is quite good and it's got a windsock on top as well. So that would be a good test to see if that's cutting out the wind noise at the moment. I have got an external microphone which plugs into this. It's going to be a better quality audio, but I don't think much. It's got a more substantial windsock on it as well. And it overrides the internal microphone so they're not, um, they're not competing against each other. Anyway, let's go inside and have a look. Oh, more of a sort of varnishy smell. Not overpowering varnish, but it's definitely not musty like the last one. 
Oh, it's got a wooden pulpit this time. That last one just had that eagle stand on it. That's got a stand as well. Oh, this is nice. Oh, wow. The organ there with all the painted pipes. Wow, this is really nice. That's more of a white boss ceiling, but again, it's got the wooden structure. This definitely feels a church of two halves, going by the roof. It's at a higher level, looks much, much older. I'm no expert, just giving you my first impressions and thoughts. It's so nice today coming to churches to enjoy them rather than looking for resources <laughs> like plug sockets. Really, really nice. Gosh, really thick walls in here and a solid roof. You cannot hear that wind outside. Look, how appropriate a poppy. Wonder who put that there. I'll never know. Not unless the person watching this video and makes a comment. When was the last visitor? The 23rd, or what is it? The 28th today, I think. So five days ago. From Khan. Oh gosh, look, New Jersey, United States. I'm guessing a lot of people probably don't even know this is here from Bath or have even been here. Look, they found it from the United States. Out through the indoor. Again, lovely little hasp on it. Let's have a wander around the churchyard. I remember this from last time being really, really nice. Looks like a million miles from anywhere. Oh look, there's another, oh it's a millennium seat by the look of it, 2000 carved into it. Look at this. Not that far from my hometown, Bath. Wouldn't think it here, would you? It does really feel like in the middle of nowhere. A lovely memorial seat, Telesford. This is lovely, isn't it? Just about hear the roar of the A36, about a quarter of a mile over there. I'm going to be f heading along that road there, following that hedgerow, heading north back to Bath. Done about 30 miles so far. By the time I get home, it'll be pushing 40. That's good enough for me at the moment, just to try and build my endurance again. Horse hooves, oh, there's a couple of horse riders that are going up that lane where I'm heading. Meanwhile, I'm just going to take this in a little bit more. Oh, it's lovely coming back here, it really is. I'll finish the video at Moncton Coombe just before I get onto the Two Tunnels Greenway which will take me back to my hometown in Bath. And I'll also tell you about some of my upcoming plans for the next month or so which hopefully will transpire into the videos in the coming weeks. Okay, I've climbed up through Moncton Coombe and I think this backdrop looking down the Cam Brook with Beals Farm behind me, that's out of the tip for your Thunderbolt. Good place to wind the video up. Really enjoyed today. I hope you've enjoyed coming along. So a little bit about my next two trips. They're both going to be camping trips, I hope. That's the plan. And both going to involve a Roman road, Marguerite's 45B, which I've filmed and cycled many times. The first one is, I realised there's a place I really want to go back and revisit and there's also an old Roman temple up there so I want to go and try and camp as close to that as possible. I also want to go and do some woodland camping up on the Mendips, again on or very close to Marguerite's 45B. The reason being is I want to practice my fire building skills because I, I hot tent in the winter, I've got my titanium wood burner but I'm always going to shops and, and taking bought wood up there, dried wood, or even dragging it all the way from home. I want to try and stop doing that if I can. I want to try and gather dead standing wood while I'm out there. I want to really practice that building my, I really want to practice bu building fires and my fire making skills in the summer. And I bought one of these folding bow saws, I think they call it a buck saw, so I'll be trying that out actually, I'll show you that. And hopefully by the time the winter comes, I'll feel confident enough to leave home without shop bought wood and see if I can light a fire from exactly what's at source wherever I end up. With that in mind, I wish you all very well and see you soon.